Well, welcome back. And now we're going to talk about research objectives. And this is a shorter lecture, but it's not intended to suggest that research objectives aren't important. In fact, they're very important. We're just going to be learning about them through more hands-on exercises in class than we are um, through just the le direct lecturing. So let me explain to you what they are, and then you'll be learning how to use them throughout the semester. So uh, remember that we have an 11-step process, and step three is actually assigning, defining research objectives. First of all, we need to establish the need for research. Once we've done that, then we need to define our problem. Once we've done that, we really need to start thinking about what it is that we need to know. And that's where we begin developing uh, research objectives that can help us to understand where our informational deficiencies are. And what research objectives are, are statements that we write up that help us to determine uh, and understand what constructs we need to measure. Now this word construct, it's a very research kind of word, um, and what it essentially means is like uh, sort of abstract themes of what it is that we're trying to learn. So, um, you know, it, 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 they're often uh, worded in very uh, almost kind of vague, uh, unspecific language that are kind of thematic. Maybe a better way to think of them, though, is to think of them kind of like being containers or buckets that you can put things in. And, um, you know, let's think about it. One way that I always like to think about constructs is when I'm putting away my Christmas decorations at home, okay? So when I'm putting away my Christmas decorations, um, I have a lot of different decorations that I have to put away that don't necessarily go together, but which I have to put together in some kind of fashion that I can figure out where I put them the next year when I have to get them out again. So I'll get out a few containers. And uh, in one container, I might put all of the ornaments that hang on my tree. Now, because I have small children who are always bringing home new ornaments, and because people give us ornaments, we have all kinds of ornaments. Some of them are balls, some of them are little figurines, some of them are handmade things. They're all different. But they all can be called ornaments, and I can put them all in the same box and, and understand where they are, where they belong, and what their purpose is. Um, I'll have another box usually that has uh, decorations that go around the house, you know, uh, maybe some wreaths or some ribbons or some decorative plates or things like that that my wife has that she likes to put out. Um, those things are all going to go in a box of around the house decorations. They're not intended to go on the tree. They're not really uh, intended for any other purpose other than just decorate around the house. I might have a third box that just has lights in it. And the lights that I have in there um, might go to the tree, they might go outside, they might go um, you know, in various places around the house, but they're just lights. And it's good to have all the lights together so that I know where all the pieces to the lights are. If I need to replace any bulbs or if I need to uh, you know, uh, find any ex uh, extension cables or anything like that, they can all be in one place. And I might have a fourth box that uh, includes you know, anything that goes around the tree, like the uh, the tree skirt or a uh, little train that we put out around the tree or things like that. And so each of these boxes has very different things in it. And these things, they're not really similar to one another when you're comparing the boxes. You know, I'm not saying I'm going to put round ornaments in one box and square ornaments in another box and handmade ornaments in another box. No, I have a box called ornaments and a box called lights and a box called around the house decorations and a box called around the tree decorations. And those constructs, those themes, those containers, they make sense to me. They help me to understand where all these things are and how they're organized. And that's all that they need to do. That's the purpose that they serve. And in fact, you know, if, if my wife were to try to put the decorations out herself, she could probably follow the same logic to find those things. So the idea of a construct is that it's a theme that groups things together and kind of puts them in a container together. When we're out collecting data, we're going to be looking for themes that we can use to help us to uh, group all of the information we're going to collect into, into these buckets so we can understand it and we can, we can understand what it's trying to address and help us to learn. And this is really a big difference between a, a well-designed research process and a, a haphazard, uh, nice-to-know research process. A nice-to-know research process often has a bunch of questions that have no relationship with each other, no understanding of how they're going to work together to build a stronger body of information. It's just a bunch of data, often kind of pointless data. A well-designed research process tries to think through the bigger picture. So often I break my studies down into three to five different themes, what constructs, that we identify in these statements that we call research objectives. 
let me walk you through how we would develop these. So let's say that we have a research problem that says we need to decide how we're going to position our existing beverage to potential customers. Okay, so we have a beverage that we're trying to sell and we're trying to position it. And it's an existing product, so it's not a new product. It's something that, that, that's out there. So four constructs that I might develop, and remember, I'm not looking to be all-inclusive in the constructs that I develop. Um, I'm, I'm looking for the areas where I have informational deficiencies, where I need to do research because I don't have the information available. So four things that I might want to know, broadly speaking, are the distinctive qualities of my beverage, which would include the flavor, the ingredients, the benefits, and so forth. Uh, the competitive landscape, you know, who are our competitors, how many competitors do we have, and so forth. Consumer needs, what do consumers want or need from this product, and that might have some overlap with that topic of benefits, but needs are, you know, they're kind of specific to what consumers expect to get out of something. And then brand perceptions, how do consumers feel about this brand? So we have four well-defined constructs here. They have a little bit of overlap, maybe, but they, they're pretty well-marked territories that tell us the big picture that we want to learn. And so what I can do with those constructs is now take them and word them into what we call research objectives. So um, the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to take these ideas and word them into statements that explain the purpose of what I'm trying to learn. So for distinctive qualities, I've written RO1, that means research objective one, determine what attributes consumers value most about our product. So those, there, there can be many attributes that we're going to measure, ultimately, in our, in, our, in our research process, probably a survey. Um, but those attributes, those help us determine the distinctive qualities. Competitive landscape, RO2. Determine who consumers perceive our competitors to be and what products we are directly competing with. So that helps us to understand kind of the marketplace that we're competing in and, and not only um, who our competitors are, but what products specifically are competing with us. You know, for example, our, our beverage, it might be a, a, you know, like a, a soft drink. We might be competing with coffee or something like that, you know, that is a little bit different, but it's, we're still competing with it because it has the same um, market that we're going for. Consumer needs. Uh, again, I told you about overlapping term benefits here. Determine what benefits consumers want to find in this product. Well, I feel like that word benefits really relates to needs, and so in my research objective, I can say, well, that's, that really maps to consumer needs the most, so determine what benefits they want to find in my product will help me to address that issue of consumer need. And then finally, brand perceptions, RO4. Determine how consumers feel about our brand and what associations they have with it. So. Do they feel like our brand is premium? Do they feel like it's cheap? Do they feel like it's top tier or second tier or they don't care about it? Um, what do they think? What associations do they have? We, we want to know that. And those four objectives will help us to measure those constructs. And those constructs are, again, the areas where we have an, a, a deficiency in information and where we need to really make sure that we uh, acquire enough information to be able to solve our ultimate problem, which again, our problem was, how to position our existing beverage to potential customers. So remember that research objectives are designed to help us identify what areas we need to look into. They're not survey questions and they don't need to be too specific. And in fact, one thing that uh, if you look in the lecture notes you're going to get to see is with the example that I just gave, I've written some associated research questions. Now research questions are kind of a drill down on what are some specific questions that we can ask about this objective that need to be answered. And those research questions aren't survey questions either. They're, they're written in a question form, but um, they're more general and, and they address multiple ideas sometimes. And they're not intended to be what we put in our survey. They're just intended to help us understand the boundaries of the information that we need to collect. And it's best to think of research objectives as being an outline of what we're hoping to learn with our study. Um, they're kind of the skeleton or the structure of how we're ultimately going to construct our survey later on or our, our, our moderator's guide or whatever we're going to use depending on the method that we choose. So think of research objectives as being an outline that really help us to, to figure out how we're going to measure those constructs that we need to go through to solve our research problem.